Hey everybody, we're back, the next video, and I thought that I would talk to you guys today about how to get through a tough quest, because there are some tough quests that you need to do. We're going to do one of them. We are going to do Party Crashers in House P, House Fierlin. Um, I've got my character Platinum here, and I have been running through uh, trying to loot some of the Pharaoh crystals that are out in the explore area so I can get one of the new weapons uh, that will help my DPS go up a little bit. Um, <clears throat> my gear has changed since the last time. Uh, I am level 9. And I'm still using the same goggles, same, the same hat, uh, and the same necklace. I did pick up a runic trinket when I ran the market quests, the uh, Sharn market quests. Which the runic trinket is a great trinket um, if you're a caster. I am still using the same belt and the same cloak. I now have a plus three charisma ring with fire resistance eight on it. That brings my charisma up to 28, which is pretty good. And the fire resist nine lets me sit at 13. I can get that up to 25 when I cast the resist energy, but <clears throat> it helps if I have uh, forgotten or if the spell wears off. The gloves, I'm using an Impulse 56 Spell Lore 3. That re that allowed me to replace the Scepter that I had of Impulse with this shield. Now, I am not proficient with shields, but <clears throat> anybody can use a shield. It doesn't matter. You won't get the PRR, so my PRR score <clears throat> is not benefiting at all from my shield, but... And you can see here I have a not proficient. But I still get all the benefits of having a shield. Um, I get the plus three constitution. I get the vitality. I get the sonic resist 10. And I can get the 6 TR if I shield block. Um, you know, like that. Then my I will get a little bit more protection. But I don't shield block on this character. I'm just carrying it because it gives me... <clears throat> more hit points and sonic resistance so it's good defensive still using the same boots still using the same ring of changes uh, I have death block bracers of dodge plus three now uh, because I switched the robe that I had with death block on it for a one that had a higher armor bonus fortification and cold resist and so you, now I have a standing cold resist, uh, and also I have my fortification up to 98%, which is really good. Uh, I could, if I had a an item with a blue slot, slot a heavy fortification sapphire, I could either loot one or trade in for it. There's little vendors, I think it's in House J that you can trade in, the vampire behind the temple there. Or you can just buy it if you have enough points. You can buy sapphires, all the different augments you can purchase uh, on the store. Uh, but I don't have an item with a slot, a blue slot. So I decided to just get gear to get my fortification up. And that's very important. You want to do that at level 8. You want to try to get your fortification to 100% if you can the sooner you can the better. I know that level 8 is the first level that you can wear heavy fortification. You can get 100% earlier than that, especially if you're on a character like a Warforged, which I have said in a previous video that they are probably the best race for Warforged or Bladeforged to play for the Hardcore League because they get so many built-in defensives. But I did the best I could, and so the quest we're going to do hopefully will allow us to have a chance, anyway, to loot a, a an item that will give me pretty decent spell resistance. 
Um, my armor class now is 28 with a 3 dot. I'm still low, 41% defense chance, but um, definitely more defensive than I was. 22 PRR, 18 MRR, and I have the ability to cast a bunch of defensive spells. Um, the next thing is you can see I have enough XP to take level 10, but I cannot because I still have level 5 quests to do. I've done a bunch, but I have not done all of them. Um, now, keep in mind that you need to do all of them if you're going to 5,000 favor, but if that is not your goal, if you're not going to 5,000, if you don't care about that reward, you do not need to do all of the quests. Reaching 1750 favor is very easy. You can do that um, very quickly. You can see right now uh, I have 821 favor. So not that much farther along and I would be able to get 1750. Um, so you can really pick and choose if there's quests that are difficult and you don't feel like doing them. Uh, you can certainly but if you want the 5,000 favor, you have to do all of the quests like we said in the previous video where I go over what quests you can skip. And so um, Party Crashers is one of the quests that you will want to do, and that is in House P. Um, prior to that, I, okay, I have everything it looks like, oh, I just hit the wrong, I hit my gatekeepers button but that's okay we can ride there gatekeepers grove is in the harbor so I looked up what the storm there's a uh, champions that are spawning with I think it's storm peaks and they're covered in covered in frost and I looked it up on the DDO wiki. Apparently those champions are spawning, but they're not supposed to be spawning. So nobody really knows what the gold, silver, and bronze coins or the keys are used for. But I've been looting a bunch of them and seeing those mobs. So hopefully, maybe they are giving us an enhanced version of a Christmas event some sort of December holiday event. Um, up until now, the, the festival really isn't, it's a, it's a holiday, but the only thing that happens is that you get cookies, basically. You can trade in for, for different cookies to a vendor and you get holiday cookies, which are, they're okay. I, you know, my feeling about the festival, the first year that they did it, the first festival ever, those cookies were fantastic because um, the game was much different back when the, when DDO first launched and those cookies were really helpful that first year um, because nobody had clickies, nobody had UMD. So if you were able to run around and put a spell on yourself with a cookie, those candy canes that allowed you to cast cure moderate wounds were amazing to have because you could use them on barbarians and fighters and you know classes that couldn't really cast heal spells but now 15 years later almost maybe what this is the 14th festival that they're having or um umd power creep most people play sort of mixed splash build as their going through their leveling process to gain past lives on the TR train. And, you know, we, we all have uh, clickies in our banks that we've saved over the years. So the cookies are really not that helpful now. I mean, it's really, that's the truth. I have a cookie jar in one of my characters on Sarlona, and I don't think I've used any of those cookies in 10 years. That's me though, maybe some a new player would find a benefit. But you know, I still do the event. I, I like holiday events in video games. I really think it brings 
um, sort of a life to the community. And if you like that sort of thing too, SSG's other game, Lord of the Rings Online, they are like the gold standard for ho holidays and video games. They do holidays fantastic over there. I keep hoping that some of the, the devs and the creative people who work on Lord of the Rings at SSG will come over to DDO and sort of give DDO their blessing and, and enhance the holidays because DDO has one a fantastic holiday, which is the Halloween, uh, the Maybar holiday. But all the others, even though um, they exist, they sort of fall flat. Um, you know, they could use a bit of tweaking. Maybe that's an Eberron thing because lore-wise, you know, it's only four years after the last war. The last war decimated all of Corvair. Um, Zendrick, the continent that we're on, is uninhabited except for Stormreach, which is a city of pirates, really. And for uh, an inspired city that is on the other side of the continent, very far away, although we actually have in Stormreach, an inspired quarter now. We allowed the the coin lords allowed them to set up uh, in Stormreach an inspired quarter, and so we they are there. But that other than those two settlements, that's it. Uh, without getting into a lot of lore, probably that has a lot to do with why Eberron doesn't have many holidays. But it is fertile ground for creative people. Um, the giant civilization that lived on Zendrick before people settled it could have had holidays that we uncover uh, through quests, archaeological digs. Anybody who's done the ruins of Threnal, that is taking place in the ruins of the giants that used to live on Zendrick, one of their old cities. Um, Corvair itself, even though, you know, the, the war completely destroyed one of the nations... And now that entire area is known as the Mornlands. There are very large... I mean, we have Sharn. Sharn is a gigantic city that has a history. So it's very likely that even though um, there are mixed sort of uh, races from all over in there, that they would have holidays that we could, you know, celebrate. Uh, the, the Dragonmarked houses probably have holidays too and probably celebrate them in different ways and then another very important thing to keep in mind is that in Eberron there is Argonesson which is all dragons and the dragons usually stay exclusively on Argonesson some of them venture out but they are also an ancient uh, race that has lived in Eberron for thousands and thousands of years so they probably have their own dragon holidays that we could participate in uh it just would take you know a, a, a team to come up with uh some stories writing and then you know the devs to put in some quests something like maybar for uh each season you know for the the winter season for the spring and for the summer would be great my opinion you know other people might say, no, I don't want them to do that. I want them to fix the game, the lag. Well, that's a great point, too. Uh, so here we are in the quest, and I'll show you guys how to do it. I'm not going to move, because the minute I move, I will trigger this NPC who will spawn a bunch of illusionary lions... What I want to do is buff up, and then my goal is to take out this Mark of Shadow as fast as I can. You don't fight any of the mobs, because if you can get the Dragon Mark, I mean, pardon me, the, the Mark of Shadow dead, then all the other illusionary monsters will disappear. So that's what we want to do. And to do that, I'm going to switch to my long range blast. And I'm going to pin these guys, put them on aggressive. 
and we aren't going to take them with us. I'm going to do what I did in the other quest if I need them because this quest has a couple of really nasty traps. There is a chance that I might need some help. Normally, if you were to do this quest on a live server, I would say you want to take with you a, a trapper uh, because there are areas uh, where there are traps, but I'm going to do the best that I can. Oh, I hit that twice. Okay. And it looks like I'm ready. And I'm not worrying about the NPC. I'll let my companions. I'm not worrying about the lions. I just got to get rid of this shadow mark. And you can see, once it's gone, everything else vanishes. Okay. So now I'm going to pin those guys there. And we are going to run through. We're going to come to another mark of shadow. It's behind this rock. And there's monsters you can see. Illusionary lions again. We're just going to ignore that stuff and focus on getting this mark of shadow down as fast as we can. You know, if you have a good melee with a solid two-handed swing, you can get that down very fast. My blasting does not do a lot of DPS, so it takes me a little while to kill this stuff. It's one of the things. They've nerfed warlocks so many times. The DPS is awful, even with... You know, even if you have good uh, spell power. So this whole room is a trap. And if you had a trapper, the box is over on that wall. And what happens is the entire floor spikes pop up and they come up in a row. So how I'm going to mitigate this, I have jump on, I have stone skin, and I have my fake hit points. I will make sure that... I have my fake hit points as, as high as I can get them, 28, and <clears throat> I have one more thing that I can do. I, I picked up some boots of false life. I'll use these, give myself extra, and I just have to basically run through jumping, and hopefully um, I can heal myself. I don't get hit twice or three times, because that would probably kill me. So I just want to jump. There was one hit. There they are again. I got hit twice. I'm going to heal before I deal with this mark. And again, we're going to kill the mark and ignore the NPC. He's going to try to punch us, but we will. Okay, then there's that. So that's how you do that one. Uh, this here... Now you can see this guy just left a bunch of snow on the ground. He's one of those new champions that's not supposed to be in the game. But what you want to do here is come up and you see these little pixies. They'll attack you once you start. But I don't go through that arch. I jump around it, if you can jump around it. And come over here and destroy this and ignore the pixies. Completely ignore them. They'll swarm you, but you should be able to get that mark dead, and then everything will vanish. So there's a lot of fighting in here that you can skip if you just focus these marks. Now, this here is another trap, and this, this area is sort of difficult. Um, the trap here is directly on the wall straight ahead. You can run up, and if you have a trapper, you can disable it. It's directly there. That's the box is right in front of us there. But the way to do this area, if I were to just walk in there, the trap would spring, and it's a bunch of air jets and a bunch of illusionary spikes that come up out of the ground, and a whole bunch of these marks of shadow will replicate all over this hallway. But the way to do this, and you can do it very easily, you just need to have a throwing weapon... Um, you target the Mark of Shadow from out here. You don't enter the room. And what you do, you just have to damage that Mark of Shadow before you go through those arches there. Before you go through these arches. So do not go through these arches before you damage this. Otherwise, this trick that I'm showing you will not work. And you'll have to find the real Shadow, Mark of Shadow. But 
if you do what I'm telling you, you hit this one that's far away, and then the real one that you need to kill will be right on the inside of this door. It's very easy to hit. So I jump and I hit that, and that triggers it. And now I can look, and you see there's a mark right here. That's the real one. That's the one that we want to kill. We have to, unfortunately, step in here. So we will be in the trap zone, but we're just going to stand still and hopefully we can see I got hit. Hopefully we can kill this quickly. And there it is. It's it's done. If you had better DPS than me, you can make that trap without getting blown around. I got blown around twice. Also, you can disable the box on the other side if you have a trap or it makes it a little easier. But you don't need to worry about it. As long as you can kill that mark, that first one that appears, if you hit the one from range, that's good and this haul is done. Uh, this here is, the mark is on the back of a scorpion. And so I'm going to keep myself in, I'm going to focus specifically on the mark, but I have to attack the scorpion because it has the mark on it so I can ignore the guide although he's getting in the way of my blast uh, but he will disappear once the mark is is gone and then I have a wand of neutralized poison so I will do that since I got poisoned no reason to take a chance I did pick up some since the last time. Um, I picked up some more potions. I picked up 10 restoration scrolls. I picked up 20 heal scrolls. And, you know, they will help me uh, if I get in a situation where I need them. My percentage to use my heal scrolls, though, is low, so I haven't put them on my bar yet. I'm still going to use these potions until I can get that up to you know, 50%, one out of two um, will be useful. Uh, so this next fight here, I, I actually am going to shrine. Even though I technically don't need it, I I'll just rebuff. I will pull the companions here, even though I'm going to leave them here, because I might, in this room, this room coming up is quite a mess. Um, there's going to be a giant and uh, an elf, an illusionary elf, chasing me around. And around the, this room, there are four shadow marks that I need to beat up, and they are on a raised pedestal. You want to focus on killing all of those and ignore all of the monsters and stuff that spawn. You don't want to jump up onto a pedestal, though, because there's traps on one of them at least. And the lion, the illusionary lions that chase you around, can knock you down. And then the giant himself can do his foot stomp thing and knock you down. So there is a chance that I could get rushed, knocked down, and not be able to move. Um, which is why I recommend not only doing this quest with a trapper buddy, if you have one, but also doing it with a regular group. I wouldn't say come in here and do it by yourself. But I'm going to show you guys that you can if you want to. And so I will rebuff myself. Put blur on myself. Okay, so now I'm ready to deal with this fight. I have my single target blast on because I'm just going to try to get these dead from range. Uh, you don't technically need to talk to this guy. You can see the first pedestal is right there, and that's the one I'm going to head for. And we are going to try our best to stay away from that giant and to stay away from everything that spawns on the pedestal. So there's the first one, and I'm going to just keep moving. There's the second mark that I need to break. Ignoring everything, I'm going to do my best to not get hit by those wolves. I'm just gonna let myself sort of fall off 
and focus on this shadow mark uh, and hopefully get it dead. There it is. Okay. Now I have to run over here to get the third one. I'm ignoring the giant and the other NPC. Now this pedestal is a bunch of traps. Oh, see, I got knocked down. When you get knocked down, you want a shield block, even if you don't have a shield. That will raise your DR. You see all those traps. I, see, I'm on the ground. I'm shield blocking right now. I'm going to try to jump out of the way as soon as I can. And without going onto that main platform into the traps, hopefully I can get a good jump right there and hit it. And Okay, now it's dead. I have one pedestal left, and then I can turn and fight the giant. When the last shadow mark is gone, the NPC should vanish as well. Uh, I have to watch out for these lions because they can trip me. Watch out for the big giant. Okay, so all of the marks are gone. Now I can focus on... Oh, I guess they both stay. Going to switch to my AoE blast so I can hit them both at the same time and just do a little kiting. And should work for the giant. He's immune to my fire, but he's still taking, you know, pretty decent force damage. Knock me down again, I shield block. You can see the block message. You can see my little arm. You always want to do that. Don't just lay there because you're prone. Okay, so that was it. That was this room. We get a chest and we get to continue into the next part of the quest. We're, we're about halfway through. Uh, you will need to have jump or a good jump to do this. So prior to coming in here, you want to get jump potions or scrolls or do it with a, a character who has a good jump um, or come in here with a, a caster buddy who can cast jump on you if you have a bad jump. Um, you may even want to take off all of your armor, unequip your shield because you, you know, having uh, any negative on your strength or jump skill. Um, I ignored all those buttons out there. I just picked up the collectibles into the theater here. And I have jump on me. Uh, I will unequip everything. So now I'm running with my hands. I've got my... I don't actually know if my shield lowers my jump, but just for uh, our purposes. And I'm going to jump and catch right there. This is where you want to catch. And I'll show you my jump is 32, which is very good. I think you can do it with significantly less than that. But in order to do this particular way that I'm showing you, you have to be able to jump up to this here. So make sure you come in here with jump. And there is a shrine up ahead. So if you needed a shrine, you could shrine. I am not going to shrine. We should be OK. Uh, since we're in a quest running around, though, and we don't have anything to worry about yet, I'll do my gold and silver roll. That's not bad. It gave me 10,000 platinum almost. Oh, more platinum. So that's great. That means now I have 65,000 platinum, which is fantastic. That would allow me to buy scrolls and potions and check the... Um, the pawnbrokers if people were actually playing so you see i jumped off that and i didn't touch the ground until i was through that this arch here i don't want to trigger anything in that room so when you jump down just make sure you kind of feather fall into this hallway 
and then go into the ballroom. Now in the ballroom, we're gonna talk to some people. You can, if you have a trapper who can open locks, or if you have knock, you can go up to this door up there and kill all the tieflings. I recommend doing that. Go into the private rooms and kill all the tieflings. I don't have lock, uh, knock, nor do I have an ability to undo the lock. So the first thing I'm going to do is run over to this guest list and put my name and then put Sin's name on it. So now I'm on the guest list. And I'll see, talking to these people, if I can use my bluff and allure skill to trick any of them into revealing that they're actually spies there to, you know, cause murder and mayhem. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, it doesn't look like... You have to have a good search and a good spot um, in order to, to notice that these people aren't exactly right. Um, and this quest here too, there are so many ways to do this. There are optionals that you, know, you can do. We're not gonna do any of the optionals. This is one of the optionals. The more optionals that you do, uh, the more um, that, you, that you can make happen before the end, so the end fight is a little easier. I believe in here there is a chest and a key, but I'm not sure if I have the ability. I don't think I have enough search to get... Oh, I do. Interesting. So here is an iron key. And the iron key opens that chest up there. If you can notice that the servers and some of the people out in the party are not what they appear to be, though, you can have them meet you back here and you can fight them. But apparently my spot is so low, I'm not noticing anything. Uh, this group right here. And also these people, one of these retainers is walking around with poison. You can notice that the cups are not as they appear. This guy here is not who he appears. All these people, you can have them meet you in the library and they'll you can fight them. But it looks like, based on my character's skill, that I'm going to have to do the end fight and just fight everything. I will try running around here for a little bit longer to see if I notice anything or if somebody tells me something. The more of the, you can look it up on the wiki too, has an explanation on how to run this, but you can get it so where there are three chests at the end. Likely the way we're doing it, um, we're only going to wind up with the one chest, but you know, if you're going to 5,000 favor, the whole point is to get through this stuff as fast as you can and to not worry about any optionals. So, you know, there, Somebody gave me a key. I don't think it's for this door. I'm gonna try it anyway. Yeah, no, it's not the key for that. So we have no ability to really trigger anything else. So I am going to go and talk to Sin or Cyan, however you say it. Yep, I've looked around, there's no tieflings nothing else to do you know if you're in a party and you have a rogue he can go get that door it has a high spot high search then you would actually notice the weird you know not all these people are what they appear to be but we're just gonna have to do the best we can and I'll throw buffs because I'm going into a fight I'll even summon my little Archon guy to fight because there, there are a lot of mobs that rush out. I'm 
We just have to wait for her to come over here. Blur on myself. Now this is a great place to use uh, Sleet Storm. Oh, I had a spell fail. And the spell fail is because I have that shield equipped. So what I've been doing is unequipping it. Here, I'll put a Sleet Storm over here. And this may help with these monsters that spawn. Remember, it's no uh, no save uh, blind if they go in there. So this guy now is going to laugh and say, all of my plans have worked. And he's going to attack and kill the Viceroy. And we're going to get rushed by monsters. Lots and lots of monsters. Uh, we even have a green alert, so many monsters. What I want to do is put this... Um, neutralize poison on myself. I've gotten tripped. I may even have to call my... Yeah, I have to call those buddies that I have to help me out here because there's just a lot of junk. Tripping me and all sorts of nasty stuff. And you can take care of all of these things prior to if you have the people who can handle this you know, if you can open that door and, but we're doing the best we can. There's one of those snow peaks people. Um, yeah, they just hit me with some sort of a stun, got right through my spell resistance. So this fight can be pretty challenging. There we go, though. We made it. Got a little scary. But that's what we planned for. Um, you know, sometimes things go bad. You have to be ready for... You have to have a contingency plan. You know, plan B. When things go bad, what do you do? You don't want to just be at it. Now, this is the chest that would spawn the mirror cloak. Um, I did not get one. It's unfortunate because they are fantastic. But we got that quest complete. That's how you complete it. Go into 5,000. Make sure you do it with a group. Make sure you bring a trapper. But if not, you see, you can do it by yourself. Just bring a hireling cleric. Um, you know, or maybe you're a baller and you can, you know, do it with no help at all. You know, Hardcore League is not the place for that, but you certainly can if you can do it. Um, I think it's better to take your time and be safe. Oh, that's great. We just got a fantastic combustion fire lore staff. A, a, a scepter that's going to replace the one that I'm holding. Right there. And we will empty out our pack. Now I can't take level 10 yet because I still have quests to do. I have to go to the necropolis and do those quests. I have to go to Three Barrel Cove and do some of those quests. And then I have to go to the Feywild and do those new quests. 
So I think I might run around in the Feywild and continue to look for the um, those Pharaoh crystals so I can get that Scepter of the Queen. Something to do to run around out there. Yeah, I got knocked down and shield blocked when I was on the ground, but then I got knocked down again while I was surrounded. You easily get killed in that situation, especially I'm wearing robes. Keep that in mind. My PRR is so low. One of the reasons that I make sure that I take, that I have a cleric that I pin because I just don't want to get stuck. You know, and that's the mentality um, on the hardcore server. Like I said, on the live server, you don't want to use hirelings because you'll you'll play better. It's better to learn the quest just to learn how to keep yourself healed. But on the hardcore server, if I were to die there, well, then I have to start all over again. I do have the extra life, but we don't know if we can count on other hardcore events having the extra lives. You have to play it as if you're on your last life. And it's not worth all of the time. You, we've already made, what, like this is video number eight, seven videos worth of content just to have the character die because, you know, I didn't want to pull out a hireling. That is ridiculous. So, you know, we want every advantage that we can get on the Hardcore League. That's one of the central messages of my video series is that, you know, you have to treat it like it's all hands on deck. Any advantage that you can squeeze out because it will save you time. It will save you grief. You don't want to be that guy that goes all the way to 4,900 favor and then doesn't plan ahead and dies, you know, in one of those last quests. You know, um, it's just, it's not worth it. Your time is too valuable. You know, that is a great mindset to have in life. You know, that your time is way, way too valuable to waste. A lot of video game companies will exploit the idea that we don't care about our time. WoW is notorious for that if you've ever played WoW. You know, WoW, you can get on a, like a taxi that is a 25 minute ride. It literally, like, that's the time. You have time to go away, eat a cheeseburger, and come back while your character travels on this digital taxi that you hired to fly you somewhere. You know, that, to me, that's a very insulting to my time. You know, I mean, the coders need to program in the idea that we're human beings. We're not AIs stuck you know, in a cycle of just playing games over and over and over. One of the reasons that I named my channel Adventure AI is because, you know, I like the notion that a lot of M MMOs have that, you know, um, human beings can just play their MMO nonstop without resting or eating. No, no, we're human beings. Th this is just a game. You know, whatever it is, whether you're in a guild in WoW, whether you play Star Wars The Old Republic, whether you're playing Lord of the Rings Online, you know, they're just games. And, you know, you have a life outside your game world. You may have a fantastic gaming community, and that's great. One of the things I was talking about with friends in real life is how difficult it is once you are grown up and older to make friends in real life, especially as a guy, I don't know if women have this same problem, but it's extremely difficult as a guy who's not in school, who's who's graduated from college. Um, to, you know, you can make friends at work, com comrades or compatriots. Um, you maybe can make friends uh, doing certain hobbies. But one of the th great things about the video game community, and one of the reasons that I started making videos and 
trying to interact with other players is because, you know, I mean, it's difficult. So it's a great way to meet new people and make friends. And we have a great community here in DDO. Just have to deal with these monsters that are come from that little interaction and then we get to loot that chest. There is a map that shows where all of the rares are. These little ch Vera crystal chunks are what I'm hunting for. And basically as I ride around I'm just doing a search like a tab search for items to see if I can spot a chest. There's another one. You see, I've, I tabbed to it. So there's a rare right there in that stump. If you don't have that hotkey, you can set up a hotkey so you can cycle through uh, objects in the environment. Um, it's very handy. It allows you to locate things very easily. See how I just tab to it and there it is. There's the chest. I of course am using my controller so on my controller it's the X key but you could set up something on your keyboard. It's just very helpful to be able to do that. I am going to, I'm not going to go up into the mountains. I'm going to go down. Uh, I don't really know this map 100% yet. But you can see there's a lot of spawn out here. So if you wanted to come out here and do explorers and get XP that way, it's good. I think this, I think it goes to 3,000. So, not as good as the Orchard, for example, but, or Ravenloft, but it's good. Oh, there's another. It's great. I haven't seen him. And he's a troll, so he'll take double fire damage, so he should die very fast, and he did. And there's another Pharaoh Crystal. And this is great. If this were a live event, this is exactly what I would do prior to doing the quests. Some people might not wait. They might just run out here and start doing the quests. But I really think, even though I just found that really good combustion item, I really think having the, the Queen's Scepter will help. You know, I could put it in my offhand if I wanted to drop the shield and get rid of my spell fail, which the spell fail is very annoying. Um, but the Queen Scepter is just a, a potency item that will be very useful for spell damage going forward because it would cover my fire and my force or if I did utter dark blast my evil damage utter dark blast is in the I believe the tainted scholar tree and it changes your base force damage to alignment evil damage which essentially is just alignment damage and it's just another type of damage however I'm hesitant to switch because since I'm in the Fey Dark Illusionist, I get a bonus to force spell power and that would not work the spell power for alignment damage. So I think I might sit and keep it keep my base damage as force damage for a while. Most people go into Utter Dark Blast. 
Uh, there are some monsters later on that are immune to force damage, but I don't think anything is immune to alignment damage. So, somebody might DD a wiki that and tell me if I'm wrong. Um, I'm doing the same thing here that we did. It's just I'm getting attacked, but I am doing the search. Oh, there's a chest and there's a named, I see. Uh, this area, though, is much more difficult than any of the other areas for this level. So I have to be careful. I would recommend coming in here with a group, but... Or have a hireling if you don't have good self-heals. And you can turn these ferro crystal chunks in for any s number of weapons. I showed you the vendor who does that, and they are good and they are made out of crystal I believe so they don't suffer the damage if you were to attack and ooze with it so I'm, I'm running you can hear me clicking the controller that is me trying to refresh the tab uh, that it looks on the environment for any, you know, I have two buttons. One is tab target. So you can see I can tab through these nymphs. And then one is for objects that allows me to see any objects. So I can either tab mobs or objects. Although in DDO, the tab mob button is broken and it does not target the next closest monster to you. It will target the one that is the farthest away for some reason. You see, rather than cycling through the crayfish, it targeted a, a sea lion that is, you know, like a mile away. It's very annoying. Um, but you get used to it. So I don't think that there are any other chests down here. Usually there's three or four rares that can pop down here. Um, but I don't see, you know, I've not seen a chest. So we may just recall out and reset it and do it again. I think that's probably the best thing to do. I've got a lot of stuff chasing me. Uh, I'll just give it one more look around this corner. Nope. Okay, and we can use our um, tuning fork to get out of here once we are once we take care of all this spawn that's chasing us. Okay. You could also recall but we'll just do the tuning fork. That'll take us back to the hall and then we can reset it. So in this gear, I'm hoping that once I do these quests, I think I will do a couple of these uh, on the in the videos just so we can sort of explore together and see what some of these new quests are. Um, I don't know them very well. So one of the reasons that I haven't done them yet, I'm sort of saving them, is because I am really worried. It's supposed to be the hardest content in the game. And being alone, I, you know, I clearly may die. But I think that it's important to just show, just keep the video as real as I possibly can. So if I die and lose a life, we can see it. We could, we could watch what it is that um you know was difficult because um you know i'm not certainly not the best player and i could make a mistake or get in a bad situation or have a really bad dice roll uh, you know or get tripped you saw um how how being tripped in party crashers i mean that's what almost killed me it was the fact that i got tripped and i could not move um, I think it was a trip, though. I could have been commanded. I don't have 
protection from evil. I could probably go and get some potions, and I probably should, but I have not done that. Um, I should have a means to get protection from evil on myself, so I am not commanded or held or, you know, um, so I think that's exactly what I will do. I think that they sell them, but I might be wrong. I'll, I'll take a look. So we got the sword is up again. Just going to get rid of these mobs. I'll have to look. I think they sell them in House J. But I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Um, I might have to look for scrolls. Or I might have to keep my eye out for uh, a reward. Uh, a wand. Of protection from evil. But it's definitely something I want. There is a quest that we could do that's in House Fjarlin that has a trinket that gives you a permanent protection from evil. I believe it's the silver flame trinket. Um, which I could go farm for that. However, that I'm not near the level to do that quest. And that quest is broken up sort of into three parts. You go in there and you fight. You go to fight the vampire. But there are a lot of traps in that quest. That is a this chest is up again too. That is a quest that I would not want to do without a trapper. And I don't really feel like buying a, a gold seal trapper. That's another thing that you can do, but my experience, the one of the reasons reasons I don't like to use hirelings, although I do use the clerics now and again for help like you've seen, but they are just dumb. The AI that they're coded with is extremely extremely stupid they will stand in fire they will just look at you while they're dying it's it's pretty pathetic how stupid that their ai is so i mean i don't think the rogues work very well uh the higher up you go the worse they get so uh you know, if you are doing epic level quests and you bought an epic level rogue, sometimes they can't even find the box. The DC in epic questing is so high. So it's a waste of money. Uh, we got a pharaoh crystal shortbow. And you can see that uh, the all of the weapons out here made out of this pharaoh crystal are considered crystal. They are not metal. So they would not be susceptible to damage from oozes, for example. Uh, they also give a Bane versus Fey destruction and maiming, which is pretty good. That only triggers on a critical hit. So, you know, likely if you're DPSing, you could find a better weapon than one of these. Um, but at level 5, it would carry you to Ravenloft, where you would get your Ravenloft weapon. Which I highly recommend. Ravenloft is fantastic at level 10. See, if I don't find enough Pharaoh Crystals once I hit level 10, I just go to do that first Ravenloft quest. I can do it on casual. That will get me to the Slayer Zone. Get me to Barovia. And then I can just talk to that NPC and pick up my free level 10 weapon so i could use that so if you're not going to 5000 favor if you are just going for the other rewards reaper or 1750 or level 20 i could take level 10 right now and just go get that weapon so technically i don't even need to farm for these pharaoh crystals but i just figured it would be interesting to come out here because this is brand new content some people may not have explored out here. Um, I think this swamp, you can get three or four rares, which is why I keep coming down here. 
Uh, I have not memorized the list of the zone yet. Um, so, but I do have it on my other computer there. And you can see I just got snared. I got snared again. You know, if there, this is normal. This explorer zone is considered normal content. If I have to go into these quests out here on elite and fight monsters that can snare me and uh, it's kind of scary like I have a feeling these quests are going to be very challenging I have done them all on Sarlona on my main and I remember them being very difficult I, I think I've done them a few times each but I certainly don't know them I certainly do not know them I am, yeah, see, I just found the Kelpie Lord's Grotto by doing my tabbing, but I don't see a chest. I'm going to keep moving through here and see if I can find another chest. Oh, I'm getting attacked, but I can't fight in the water, so I have to keep swimming. There we go. Okay, no chests. Don't see one up there. Yeah, these monsters are quite challenging. So, who knows how the actual quests will be on the hardcore server. On the regular server, I believe that I died once or twice uh, in a couple of the quests. I forget which I need to remember I, I was going to make a note because I did a quest that was very difficult and I said to myself this is going to be a quest on hardcore league that kills a lot of people when they try to do it so hopefully I can remember this and we can flag it maybe it'll be a quest that people skip they put on their skip list but you know the gear out here is so good that I doubt anybody's going to want to skip uh, this stuff. I think that people are going to want to do all of it. You can get a very good uh, set bonus out here. And why not? Oh, there's a rare right there. would be nice if I could find a good spell resistance item. There is a helmet that comes out of the house Denith Sentinel quest line. Um, I believe it's in the last quest and the last chest. Uh, it's spell resistance 15. That would be much better. I am wearing spell resistance 5 right now. Um, I was really hoping to get that mirror cloak. I might actually run that quest again just to see if I can loot that cloak. Because it is extremely useful. It's spell resistance 17. And that would give me quite a bit. You know, I have 5 right now, so I would add 10. So my spell resistance would go with that cloak, go to 27. And for heroics, I, that is fantastic. Uh, so, oh, here's a rare I have not seen. Old One Eye. There's a chest. Maybe I'll get a, a weapon. Maybe. Nope. I've noticed that the weapons do not spawn that often. And I wonder what his. Oh, he. Yeah, he going back he's resetting that's why he was yellow I'm just jumping and looking for chests you technically could jump and 
you know, do a search for purple names or red, whatever color you have. Uh, but I think it's easier to look for the chests. And I don't see any. And I'm pretty sure we covered just about all of this. I'll go to the top of this hill here. Yeah, I don't see anything. So I will recall, reset it one more time. We're almost at 750 slain in the heroic area, so we'll get a bunch of XP. Now, if I were really playing this character, which is my Reaper character, I would have already taken level 10. I wouldn't be doing this, but... So there is a rare that can spawn right here at this bench. We've seen him. It's the the Freedy or the fire dude. Uh, there is a rare encounter that can spawn right there. On the top of this hill in front of us, there can be a named displacer beast and his chest would be right here. But doesn't look like he is here. I've not seen him yet. I think the next rare that can spawn is up on that big hill in front of us with the tree. But I am doing the tab search for chests anyway because there might be something I can't see or don't know about. This is another location for one of those rare encounters with Hersum. Yeah, so the top of this is where we get that s magical singing stone. Uh, be surprised if we're here again. No, nope, it's not here. Don't see anything there. I do see the Fountain of Wonder. The Fountain of Wonder is sort of not worth clicking. I'll click it. It can put a debuff on you. Oh, that one healed me. It, you know, you've just an equal a, a chance to have it put a debuff. And the debuffs vary from not helpful to very not helpful. I don't see any chests. This is an explorer zone here, this gazebo. Or shelter, they call it a sheltered temple. I am not sure if there is a rare that can spawn up in that snow area, but I have never found one up here. Uh, I would have to check the map, but I just don't think that anything spawns up there.
the range on the on the tab search is pretty far so if I'm not seeing anything that means that there isn't anything uh, we'll to do another search in the swamp here it's my little dragon from the Feywild uh, tree this illusionist tree gives me force and universal spell power that's great it's the best if you need spell power that's the best one it's better than Harper and I don't the others don't have it this tree line over here this is where all the owls live so you can get an explorer zone right here I think I already got it. Yeah. It's the owl court. I don't know if you ever get to meet the owl court. It would be it would be cool. Yeah, that ghost is up a lot. Mm, there's some fungus. I'll pick that up. Trying not to get knocked off of my horse so I can just keep running. Hopefully, uh... stay away from these things. I know that there is a rare that can spawn sort of in this area here. And I don't think we've seen it yet, although I don't think it's there now. Yeah, we have a green alert. There's a lot of monsters out here. The displacer beasts are very cool. Kind of scary looking. I'm really happy that they added new mobs. I really like the the red hats and the harpies and don't really care for the crayfish. I don't really care for the blights. You know, the blights should be limited to Barovia. I thought that they were a Barovia specific mob. I've already talked about how I don't like the blights, but you know, I played Dungeons and Dragons for a long time and fought a lot of monsters and never fought a blight. So. The fact that I run into blights everywhere is annoying. Uh, I don't think that there's anything else out here. I think that we got everything. So I am going to do my best to get out of dodge. Oh, it doesn't look like anything's following me. So I'll do the tuning fork and we'll wrap the video up. Next time we will actually do some of the quests out here and see, you know, uh, I know that the first few in this series here, I think there's four. I don't think that they're that challenging. I think it's once you get up there that they get uh, significantly harder. But there's also quests that you pick up out in the zone. And I think some of those are difficult, like the Kelpie layer. I'm pretty sure that one is very difficult because there's just a lot of mobs that come at you very quickly. But we'll take a shot at getting some of these quests done next time. But until then, I hope adventures go well. I'll catch you later.
Join us for more. I plan to do lore videos for each quest in DDO as well as the raids. Plus, I will be releasing more Session Zero videos for DDO on topics such as player character races, the religions of Eberron, the Last War, and the Mornlands, the Dragon Marks, the Dragon Marked Houses, and much, much more. Click the like button if you enjoyed this video. Comment down below. I like interacting with other players. My main tune in DDO is named Mary. I am on Sarlona. I also have a guild on the Hardcore League. My guild is Death Smile. Please say hi if you're on either of those servers. Uh, subscribe to see more Adventure AI content about DDO, uh, Dungeons and Dragons Online, and gaming in general. I also play Star Wars The Old Republic. You can join us at Adventure AI on Discord. Check us out on Twitch. Check us out on Twitter. You can go to our Patreon and become a patron of the channel where you would get access to all of the scripts, the images, the music, the videos, as well as behind the scenes, and the ability to request topics for me to make uh, future videos. Thanks very much. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I hope your adventures go well.